My name is Isaac. My project consists of three timelines, a map, a family tree, and a memoir. Thank you for your interest in my project. My first timeline is on my great step grandfather, Uncle Bill. Him and his twin were born on October 29th, 1922, and he became a U.S. vet during World War II in 1942. After the war in 1955, he got his first job at LAX, and in 1972, he married Linda Paley. She died in 2016, and sadly, he passed away in 2022. My next timeline is on my grandma, on my mom's side, Francine Cornos Bacalar, but we call her Grandma. She was born June 29th, 1945, excuse me, in the Bronx, New York, and in 1966 started medical school to become a doctor in psychiatrics. Uh, she married Nick Bacalar in November, on November 22nd, 1975, and she had Elizabeth Bacalar on October 7th, 1977. And my last timeline is on my great grandma on my dad's side, Lottie Kirsch, and we called her Oma. And she was a Holocaust survivor during World War II as well. She was born in Czechoslovakia in 1922, and after the war in 1947, married Fred Bloom and was impregnated with her baby girl, Helen, and had to make the journey to Ellis Island while pregnant. In, 19, in 1972, Fred died, and she remarried to Max Kirsch in 1980. In 1998, she moved to Florida, where Max died, and in 2005, she passed away as well. And my map is my family comes from a line of Eastern Ashkenazi Jews, so coming from Eastern Europe, going over to Ellis Island and New York. So the first person I'll say is Benjamin Becker. He came from Ukraine, and his real name was Pinkus Pekar, but they didn't know how to spell his name, so they just called him Benjamin at customs. Francis Paley came from the Czech Republic, he came with a violin that we still have to this day, but we couldn't bring it tonight. Uh, and Isidore Kurz, who came from Poland, and when he came to customs, they thought he was diseased because he had hit his hand with a hammer and they sent him all the way back to Poland. And the next person is Bessie Fishman who came from Ukraine in 1892 when she was just 13 years old. Lottie Kirsch, Oma, came from Venice and she was pregnant, like I said, with her baby. And then Alan Bacalar, who traveled to a lot of places. He was born in New York, then moved to Georgia, Washington, Oregon, Japan, Africa, and Korea, then back to New York City. And my mom and my dad were both born in New York, and moved to Palmer, and then to Juno, where they had my sister, and then me. And my family tree goes five generations back, starting with me and my sister, and I'll start on my dad's side of it. Jeff Kirsch, who moved here in 2005 from New York, his parents were Bonnie and Scott Kirsch. They lived in Long Island, but moved to California in 2006. Bonnie's parents were Irwin slash Bud and Judy Becker. Irwin, this is Irwin's shoe right here, copper shoe. And uh, Scott's, Kirsch, Scott's parents were Max and Linda Kirsch, and Max was a taxi driver. Bud's parents were Benjamin and Lillian Becker, and she, that Lillian ended up to be 92 years old. And Judy's parents were Henrietta and George Roth. He was a mailman during the Great Depression. Max's parents were Isidore and Ida Kirsch, who had a tailor shop. And Linda's parents were Francis and Zachary Paley, who had eight kids. And on my mom's side, Libby Bacalar, who moved here with my dad in 2005, from New York as well. And Nick Bacalar and Fran Cornos were her parents, and they met on a blind date in New York. Nick's parents were Alan and Ruth Bacalar, but Ruth had a severe case of dementia and couldn't remember much. And Fran's parents were Alex and Muriel Cornos, but sadly Alex died when she was just three years old, and she had to go to a foster home. Alan's parents were Louisa and Moses Bacalar, and they owned a hardware store. And Ruth's parents were Bessie and Jacob Beck, who had a newspaper. 
Alex's parents were just mother cornos, so nobody really knew anything about the guy or his parents. So all, the, all my grandma knew was mother cornos, what they called her. And Muriel's parents were Nathan and Ruth Aminsky, who owned a haberdashery, which is a hat store. And now I'll read from part of my memoir, and, and it's about my first home run. E thump. The brakes squeaked as we stopped at the desolate field where we think our team should be. But nevertheless, we get to practicing, thinking we were all alone. But we were not. Mac was there. Me and him ran a pole, then stretched and played some catch, then grabbed the bucket of baseballs, protective screens, bats, helmets, and batting balls. We were ready to hit. It's my round first as I step up to the plate as it, and the cold breeze washes over me and a feeling of readiness filled my brain. And I took my first swing. Whoosh, miss. Ouch, I'm sore from the past weekend's soccer tournament. Okay, let's get locked in now. I say, uh, uh, let's get locked in now. I take a step to my dad who's pitching and say, I want to try to hit a home run today. Okay, he says. Now I start hitting one hopper, singles, line drives, but now I want to hit one out. I take a big leg kick, cock my arms back, and swing hard over and over and over again. I keep hitting, then boom. The ball flies high, and I think to myself, is this the one? But no, it hits a fence. Are you kidding me, I say in rage? Fence, 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 again and again. Ah, oh, this is so annoying, I say on my last pitch of the round. Now it's Maxter. He gets some nice hits, and before I know it, the bucket is gone, and I throw all the balls in. It's my turn again. I take a big, deep breath, and eat a fistful of beef jerky, then we keep going. Okay, this is the one now, I say to myself. Big step, loaded, and swing. Whoosh, the smell of dust off the ball filled the air, and I think to myself, please get out, please get out. I see it slicing through the air, and I hear the zip of the balls. I flip the bat. It got out. My first home run. Let's go. We start running around the field like wild baboons, hooting and hollering. And I felt such pride as I went to pick up that ball. And it felt like I was blown. Looking back at the day at Miller Field at Glacier Valley School it makes me feel so, to, so proud of myself. But to know that I can do that gave me a lot of confidence. Uh, thank you for coming on my presentation. And that's the end. If you have any questions, please raise your hand.